Today on In The Woodyard, we're talking about equipment. We're gonna talk about what I take with me when I go to cut on location. Here it is, and here we go. So yesterday, I went and cut some wood that was alongside the road uh, about 15 miles from here at a golf course. And while I was cutting, I was thinking about, you know, the stuff that I needed there, what I was using, and I thought this would be a good idea for a video to talk about the equipment that I take when I'm going on location to cut. When I'm here in the wood yard, I got everything right in my back storage room office area where I got a little repair shop in there. So I keep my saws, I keep all my stuff inside, all the valuable stuff inside. And uh, so I can come and go as I please, go in and sharpen, warm up, change clothes, whatever I need to do. But when I go and cut on location, you gotta think about everything you're gonna need, make sure you've got it. Because the worst thing you can have happen is when you're there, you uh, have a problem and then you can't do any more work. So I take spares and extra stuff. So we're gonna talk about what I take along when I go on location right now. Here we go. So the first thing I'm gonna talk about is camera equipment because that's the one thing none of you probably take with you when you go to cut, but I do. So I always take a tripod, usually two. I usually take two because now I have, actually I have three different cameras that I can use. I have the camera that's recording right now, which is a GoPro Hero 7. And I have a wireless mic, it's a Rode system, it's wireless, that I can, it works up to like 300 feet away, so I can turn around, walk away like this, and I can keep talking to you guys, and you can hear everything I'm saying while I'm working, instead of being a mile away from the camera. Also, it has a dead cat on it, it's a little bitty thing here, this fuzz, keeps the wind from um, getting picked up in the mic. So I have to take that stuff along, I always have to make sure it's charged, and I have to take my camera bag with me. So in my camera bag, I've got, I've got spare batteries, I've got chargers so I can charge batteries around there, I got the charger, um, of course I always keep my wallet in there, now you know where my wallet is, I keep it in there because that way I know it's always in there. Um, I keep all the extra stuff I'm going to need in here, extra cards, um, and I've got two GoPros now, and I've also got a Canon camera that I use for some other stuff, so that, that's one of the things that I always take uh, with me when I go cut. Um, so I've always got the equipment I need when I'm going to go. But that has nothing to do with the cutting part. That's just the, uh, the video part that I have. But I thought I'd mention it right away because it's a little different than what most guys would take. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is chainsaw. Zzz, zzz, zzz. Multiple. You need multiple. We're going to talk about that. So I have multiple saws. I have five actually six if you count some of the older ones um, but there's only three that i really use most of the time i have an older uh, 455 rancher um, husqvarna then i have a 576 xp right here and these are two 572s uh, and then i have another little old saw but these are the three that i use most of the time and the reason i use three because the guys ask me why do you have three chainsaws and these are all you know thousand dollar chainsaws because this is what I use to cut wood. And, and you have to have a working saw to cut wood. Now, if you're cutting on hot days, especially in the summer, if you use one saw and you cut, fill it back up, cut, fill it back up, cut, fill it back up, cut, the saw never gets a chance to cool down. And it's just like a person. It needs to rest sometimes. <laughs> they will last longer if you let them cool down because heat is one of the major killers of a chainsaw. You can burn them up. Um, so I pretty much always take three saws. The other reason I like taking three saws is probably one of the main reasons. If you have a problem with a saw, you put it away, you grab another one and start cutting. If you have a problem with getting pinched, you grab one of the other saws, cut yourself out. If you have a problem with a chain, say your chain snaps or you bend a bar, grab one of the other saws and you start cutting. So another reason that I have the three saws is they do get dull when you're cutting. I start with three sharp saws. I start with one, then I go to the next one, then I go to the next one. When I, all three are done, used up as far as a tank of gas, I will either sharpen all three or I'll grab the one or two that is still sharp and I'll fill it up and then cut again. So I sharpen a lot fewer times. I still sharpen the chains as many times, but I do it in a, a batch system basically. And when I'm on location, I take two spare chains. That's in my kit. I'll show you that in a little bit. I also take along my little Dremel battery powered, and I also take along a bunch of files so I can stay sharp no matter what. Some people that I have talked to, loggers especially, they'll just take extra chains. And a lot of loggers will also just take extra chainsaws. They'll just take four, five, six chainsaws and they just grab a new one and just keep cutting. Now, my saws are all about the same size. These are all like 70cc saws. 
The reason is, is because that's what I want. Um, I can cut more and faster with this size saw than I can with almost any other size saw. If you go smaller, you don't have as much speed or power. If you go bigger, you gotta lift that thing all day long. This is just a nice size. It doesn't matter what brand you have, they're all good, as long as they're sharp and they're running. That's all that really matters. I'm not a, a real picky guy when it comes to equipment. I just want it to work. Steel saws are great. Um, you know, there's nothing wrong with them at all. Um, Makita makes a saw that's pretty decent from what I hear. That's great too. Echo makes some really nice saws. There's nothing wrong with any of them as long as they're running and sharp. That's all that really matters. I just stick with this brand because it's kind of what I've got started with years ago with my dad and my brothers. And, and if you stick with similar models, if one saw dies on you, I mean really dies on you, you can take parts and transfer it to the other ones as things break, which I have done quite often. This uh, 576 here that I've had for, I don't know, like seven years now, probably a third of the parts on here came from a different saw. Um, the cover, um, the uh, safety brake, the clips, uh, the handle, um, a bunch of bolts, the muffler, um, air cleaner, stuff like that, the filter. I mean, I've taken lots of stuff from the other ones. So that's one nice thing about having similar saws is you can cannibalize the old ones when they die to fix the newer ones. And it works really well and you save a bunch of money by doing that. So. I think that's enough about the saws. Oh, I also run, everybody's gonna ask. Also, two things about the saws. I run 24 inch bars and full chisel chains. I mean, they're full, they're not, there's no skip tooth or anything, just regular ch regular chains, um, 24 inch bars and chains. I use Oregon or Husqvarna, I don't care. They all cut really nice. And I use only premium gas, no ethanol. Somebody asked me about that the other day. Only premium, that's all I've ever run in any of my small engines. And guys have mentioned that they run 40 to one mix on their gas. I run 50 to one just like the, the uh, instructions and the recommendations from the manufacturer say. So that's what, that's what I use. So I think I covered enough on the saws, onto the next stuff. So now we're gonna talk a little bit about the safety gear. First thing is I wear earplugs, in my ears and I wear the helmet with the muffs. I wear both at the same time all the time because I like to hear and my hearing is already going and uh, it's kind of important to save your hearing. Chainsaws are extremely loud, especially for you guys that are running those bark boxes or the, the modified mufflers. They are extremely loud. Um, also, I wear chaps all the time when I'm cutting. I also wear steel toe boots when I'm cutting and I wear gloves and I wear my shield down. I've tried wearing safety glasses. They fog up right away on me because I sweat a lot when I'm cutting because I work pretty hard. And I'd rather be able to see and not cut my body parts off than to maybe get a piece of sawdust in my eye. Um, with the shield, uh, the face mesh works really good. I, I really don't have a problem with it. Once in a while you get a little speck of dust, but no big deal. So that's kind of my safety stuff. I wear it all the time and you should too. The next thing we're gonna talk about is gas and bar oil. Uh, I always make sure I got at least a gallon long if I have a partial um, gallon. I use Mystic, by the way. And this is tall timber. Doesn't matter. It all works. I've never had a problem with any of it. Yes, I put pink tape on them because they're black. You set them down in the woods somewhere, they're real easy to not be able to find, especially if you're in a brush pile or something or if a tree drops by it. So I put the pink on it. Um, this is a no spill, it's called, gas can. Best one I've ever used. You can see where your level is here as far as your gas. It's a two and a half gallon, which is perfect because I do a, uh, usually a five gallon um, a mix of oil. Um, so it's a container that makes two gallons at a time. That's what I was trying to say. I mean, it makes five gallons at a time. So I have two of these. So usually when I get down to my last one, I'll, I'll mix a batch. Usually I do a uh, 50 to one, like I mentioned. Um, but these work really good because it has a push button on it. So you can tip it like this and it doesn't spill at all. You can tip it right into it and it doesn't, do, nothing comes out until you push the button. So you can actually use your thumb as you're putting the fuel in to control the flow of it so you don't overspill. Well, I still do. I mean, it happens because I'm not perfect. I spill a lot, actually. <laughs> so um, that's what I use. So I always take this along and these along when I go cut. Sometimes if I'm going to cut for like up to my brother's and I'm going for two or three days, I'll take both my gas cans and I'll take two full gallons of oil with me. Um, because if we cut all day long, um, you can run out of gas, you can run out of oil. 
Also, if I'm going on location, a lot of times I'll take two gas cans. I have one I leave in the truck and one into the woods in case I come back to the truck and I'm gonna eat lunch or something or I'm gonna do something to a saw and I can sharpen the saw, fill it up with gas, fill it up with oil, and a lot of times my gas and oil will be in the woods where I'm cutting. Could be, you know, 100, 200 yards away. So it's always good to have a couple. One other th reason I take two is it happened one time to me. A buddy of mine filled up his saw and I didn't realize he left my gas can sitting in a spot and I couldn't see it because it was kind of in brush. I dropped a tree, landed right on top of my gas can and exploded it. So he bought me a new one because <laughs> it was his fault. <laughs> so that can happen. So that's why having extras is good because if you're, you know, 20, 30 miles away, hour away from home and you're cutting and you have no gas, no oil, a saw that won't run, it's good to have spares. The next thing we're going to talk about is my kit. Basically, this is extra stuff that I take along for when I'm cutting, so I have it with me. One of the things that doesn't fit in here that I do take occasionally, if I'm going to cut a long time, I will take an extra bar along. And the reason I take an extra bar along, again, is in case I ruin a bar or drop, you know, something gets broken, you know, whatever stuff happens. You can, I've had tips on my sprocket on the tip of the saw explode on an old one, you know, so I replaced it and I had a spare along, so that's always good. Um, or or if you get stuck really bad in a tree, you get pinched really bad because it happens to all of us. If you haven't get, gotten pinched in a cut on a saw, cutting a tree down, you haven't cut very much. That's just all I have to say about that. So what you can do is you can take your power head off of your saw, slap on a different bar, put on a different chain and cut yourself out if you only have one saw. So there you go, that's a cheap way to have two saws. Have two bars, two chains with you. That way you can cut yourself out if you have to. So, inside the box, what I have here, this is new, I just bought it. Uh, it's got a tray in it so I can, I have different things in here. So in the top tray, I'm gonna talk about that first. I have my little Dremel sharpening tool here. It's got a bit on it so I can sharpen chains and it's good for about three sharpenings or so. I have a tape measure in case I need to measure a tree or measure something. I have extra nuts in here for my saw in case I lose them. I have a roll of black tape in case I got to tape something up because that does happen occasionally. I have a big scrunch and I have a small scrunch because I like to keep one in here. I like to keep one in my pocket when I'm cutting so I have it. Also in here I have my hand file. I have a box, a dozen files. Actually, there's more than a dozen. There's a dozen in this box. There's like about three more in here, four more in here. I have a depth gauge. I have my tip greaser. There's a grease in here. I can grease the tip. I have my bifocal safety glasses for when I'm sharpening. I have extra earplugs. I have a couple different screwdrivers, a Phillips and a regular. I have a little uh, needle nose pliers. I have a couple extra packages of bits so that for sharpening, so I keep those in here. I also have a flat file for doing my rakers, so I can take my rakers down if I have to because sometimes you forget or they, you don't realize that they need taking down because you're not cutting very good. So this is all the stuff that I keep in the top tray and uh, I'll set that here. And then down inside I have an extra pair of earmuffs in case I want to take my helmet off and say I am loading wood or something like that and my brother's cutting or I'm with someone else that's cutting and I don't want to wear my helmet because I don't want to have the helmet on. I don't need the fa face mask because uh, I'm not actually cutting. So I have this along or if someone's helping me, I can give them these so that they're saving their ears. I also have an extra pair of gloves in here, brand new pair I keep in there. Actually, I have two pair. I've got that pair. Then I got a real lightweight pair here in case I got to work on something greasy. I've got a pair of mechanics gloves. I've got a, a couple rags in here. Um, here's the extra mix oil that I bring along for my gas. This will make five gallons. I always keep it in here just in case I run out or something or from somewhere. It's like, like I mentioned before, if you lose your gas, crush it you can go get another can and you can make some oil because not everybody has this but pretty much every gas station will have a can um, i also have i always have two extra chains in here i have the husqvarna H, h47s that's the size that i use the ones i like i also like the oregons they're fine too um, i have a little hook in here for pulling logs if i'm pulling stuff um, i have a little brush in here for cleaning stuff out if i want to clean it out I have a little uh, saw in here, a little hand saw, and I have used this quite a few times actually. And when I use it, a lot of times it's when 
Um, say I get a saw pinched and all I need to do is cut a little branch just to release some pressure. I've used this. Sometimes I'll miss a branch on when I'm loading logs into the truck or into the trailer and all my saws are out of gas and I don't want to fill them up. And I'll have, say it's a branch as big as your thumb and it's oak and it, you can't break them off and it'll be a big branch, you know, attached under the brush. So I have this and I just zip it off and that way it's gone and it's done, I don't have to worry about it and I can take that chunk of wood. So I use this quite a bit actually. Um, I also have a spare spark plug for my chainsaws, I keep that in here. Kind of a universal one that works for all of them. And then I have a whole bunch of wedges. I've got, I don't know, there might be, what do I have here? Seven of them, it looks like. I got a bunch in here. Little ones, I got big ones. I got some broken ones. This is a tough timber one. I kept it because it still works okay. The tough timber ones, garbage. Don't ever buy them, they break. Here's the other side of it. I broke three of them that I had. So there you go. Um, I also have a wooden wedge that I made that I just keep once in a while. And you can make a wedge in the woods if you have to with your chainsaw. You can just cut one. So if you need a wedge, you can always cut a wooden one. You don't have to have a plastic one. But the nice thing about the plastic ones is they're easy to see. I also have a big splitting wedge in here just in case I need to split something apart. And then I also have a bunch of tools in here. There's a bunch of uh, tools for the chainsaw for adjustments. I have Allen wrenches, all the things you need. I also have a stump vise. This you pound into a, into a stump from the top. You can open this up and you can put your bar in it and then you have a vise for sharpening. I've never used it before. I usually, I usually don't have to, but I thought it was kind of neat to have. So someday I'm gonna use it and do a video on it. So there, that is my go kit. So I'm gonna put all this away and we'll go on to the next thing. The next thing I'm gonna talk about is fuel. Fuel for me. I take along a lot of sports drinks. I take Powerade, Gatorade, I take along iced tea, I take along Mountain Dew, which is basically nectar of the gods. I take this stuff along and I usually, if I'm going to cut a long time, I'll take four or five bottles. I've drank as many as seven in one day when I was cutting all day long. I take along a big jug of water with ice and I also take along a bunch of uh, like power bar, like cliff bars, things like that. Um, sometimes I'll take a lunch with me, sometimes I'll just go get lunch. But I always have candy bars, things like that along because you gotta stay, Got to have your fuel, and I burn a lot of calories. I, I burn all of them. So you got to have fuel for yourself. That's important. Next thing we're going to talk about is clothing. I take along extra clothing. I got to walk around over here and to grab this stuff. So I always have along an extra coat. Well, it's a fleece thing. An extra sweatshirt. I take along an extra t-shirt, and I take along an extra long underwear shirt. Now, the reason I do that is in the winter time of the year, I'm cutting in, the, even in the fall and spring, if it's cool out, you get real sweaty and if you stop, you get cold, especially on a windy day like yesterday was. It was miserable out there because it was like 20 mile an hour winds and it was uh, like 10 degrees, so it was cold. Um, so I take that along for changing because I'll change halfway through the day. I'll change my t-shirt, my long underwear. I mentioned my thong once in a while. Sometimes I'll change actually my underwear and I'll change my long underwear if it's a day where I'm really sweating a lot. I take that along quite often. Here is an extra hat I take along because when I cut, I wear a hat underneath my helmet, especially in the wintertime because I sweat a lot and I have different layers of hats. This is a heavier one, this is a Carhartt one. Got a bunch of different ones and I'll switch a hat out fairly often. I also take along a Cromer because that's pretty warm and I can wear this over this when I'm not cutting. A lot of times I take along an extra ball cap because I'm sweating again and I'll switch hats out part of the way through the day. Um, <clears throat> I take along extra gloves all the time. I usually take two or three pair minimum. In my truck, I almost always have three or four pair. Because if you're working on a day, number one, if it's raining, you're, everything you touch with leather gloves, you're gonna get your gloves wet real fast. Or if it's a day when you've got snow and, and it's you know, in, in it's melting temperatures in the 30s and 40s, that snow is wet and you're touching it, so your gloves get wet pretty fast. So I take extra gloves along. And I also take along a couple extra pair of socks. Sometimes I'll change my boots off. My feet start to get a little chilled because if I don't have um, insulated ones on that day and it's colder than I thought it was going to be, I will change my boots. I also a lot of times will take extra boots along to change my actual boots out because my feet sweat and I want to stay dry. Next topic. The next thing that I want to talk about are some of the other tools that I use when I'm cutting. Um, 
rope. I always try to take along a couple hundred feet of rope because you never know when you're going to need to pull a tree down or turn it to a different direction or you might want to just pull it out from a hole so you don't have to carry the wood up. Um, I also have a giant pulley that I use occasionally. You can attach it to a tree. It's a big pulley. This is one for running lines, for power lines. I found this years ago in the woods just laying there and I thought, oh, I can use that. And it's a really good one. It's a 25,000, 2,500 pound. Yeah, 2,500 pound max. So pretty darn neat pulley. So that, I, I always take along my X27 Fiskars. I've used this a lot. Yes, I have pink tape on it. And uh, this is my favorite ax slash splitting mall. Um, it's lightweight. For those of you that know about these, I'm not telling you anything new. For those of you that don't know, get one. You'll love it. You'll throw away all your other, you won't throw them away, but you won't use your other splitting malls. Um, because this is light. It only weighs, I don't know, the head on it is, somebody told me it was like three pounds or something like that. Uh, I don't know, you can swing it all day long without getting tired. It's great because you can split apart really big rounds if you want, uh, so you can lift them if you're not able to rip them or noodle them. Um, sometimes I use it for driving wedges. Um, I just use it for a lot of different things. So it's just handy to have. If you got to chop a branch off, like I mentioned before. If you've got a, a round, you missed a small branch on, you can chop them off real easily. I also take along a bigger maul, not always this one. This is actually one of my prettier ones. Uh, this is a six pounder. I also have an eight pounder. I'll take that along quite often too for pounding stuff loose. If I have to pound something loose or, you know, I just have it along. Another thing I take along quite often in the winter time is a shovel. And I take this one along a lot. This is one I have in the wood yard here because you can't get stuck. Um, there's not much snow this year, but there's years where we'll have knee-deep snow. And I go into the woods and sometimes when you're in the woods, you can get stuck or you just need to shovel a spot out. So I take the shovel along occasionally. The last thing I'm going to talk about is, well for this, is the hand cart. I have a little hand cart here that I take along. And the reason I take that is sometimes I'll be 50 or 100 yards away, the closest I can get to a, the truck or the trailer. And I have a bunch of rounds I have to move. So you can either pick them up and carry them one at a time, or you can load up a whole bunch of them on here and have all the weight on the ground and just pull the cart through the woods. A small hand cart, from what I have found, works better than almost anything else other than like in, you know, ATV or something. Because it's narrow enough, you can go pretty much anywhere. You can load big rounds onto it. You can stack three or four of them on there. I use this quite often when I go on location to cut, and it works out really nice. So the next thing I'm going to talk about, and this will probably be one of the last things, is my woodchuck. It's a woodchuck brand. Cant hook, whatever you want to call it. Some people have different names for them. Mine has a removable tip, so it does turn into a cant hook. But it basically is a stand. You can crank your wood um, off the ground, and then it'll sit up on here, and you can split it. So I take this along, too, so it works really nice. For moving big logs, or if you got to roll them over, if you get a cut that you don't want to cut into the ground, you can roll it over, so it works really nice. The last two things I'm going to talk about, obviously, I take my truck. Um, you got to have a truck. I just use it all the time. And along with the truck, my trailer. I have a dump trailer and I take that almost all the time when I go to Conlon location. Because with the dump trailer, I'm able to load up all the wood and bring it back. Like yesterday when I was cutting, I cut a full cord and I brought it home. I cut for an hour and a half. I was able to drive right to it, threw it in the trailer, brought it back. So that is pretty much everything that I take with me when I go to cut. Oh, the most important thing, I forgot this. This is it right here. Gotta take your phone. Because you never know when you're gonna have a broke down truck, or you're gonna get hurt, or you need to call somebody for something, or on your way there, or on your way back. If someone's coming, they can bring you equipment. You can call someone, they can help you out. Take your phone all the time, make sure it's always charged. It's very important. That's all I got time for today, folks. Thanks for being here. You know what to do. Poke the buttons. Hit them all. Hit the like, subscribe, share, all those good things. Tomorrow I'll be back in the wood yard. You should come back too. It'll be fun. Between now and then, get outside, get cutting. Good night, Irene.